And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joseph Nassif, a.k.a. Jojo. And this is Chris Cowan. Yeah, this is uh, Chris Cowan's first time commentating. It's my first time. I am uh, happy to be here finally on the show. Thanks. And uh, I feel very privileged. Yeah, very privileged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Caleb Myers playing this awesome Gris Grixis aggro deck that I just love watching. And then on the other side, we have Mr. Greg Pelican G. Pelly playing four-color mid-range mill. You know, I, yeah, I always put mid-range on there, the four-color, but he only has the black in his deck for Nefelia Drown Yard. Okay. So he's got kind of like a back-end mill strategy because, you know, he really just likes to stall out his games right, right to the end and then just make it a, just a real downhill slope right at the end just to kind of keep you watching. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, G. Pelly's four-color mill, so... Caleb's going down to six. Uh, things, interesting things about Caleb's deck. I want to talk about the interaction between Tandem Lookout and Hellrider. Yeah, and it's uh, it's something I think a lot of people really overlooked because Tandem Lookout you can pair, and it says whenever the creature deals damage yeah. to a player. So it's not combat damage. So with Hellrider, you have the potential of drawing, I don't know, a zillion cards. So no matter who's attacking, Hellrider still deals each one point of damage. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So... Uh, there's no early game from either one of them. Um, I'd also like to point out that I think Tandem Lookout is a good card to be playing right now because people have went away from Pillar of Flames. Ooh, missed the land drop by Ooh, Caleb. Yeah, well, people went away from Pillar because Zombies isn't seeing as much play anymore. So. That, that's true, that's true. And, uh, you know, if, especially if I'm playing at a uh, F&M and I see a zombie deck, I am actually pretty excited because I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, uh, dealing with it. Yeah. Uh, because I still play Pillar of Flames. Oh, but. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's just weird. A uh, whole lot of nothing going on the first couple turns. Caleb missed some land drops. He hits yeah. his third. That's a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, and, you know, no no far seeks from Greg. So um, I think this was, he was pretty happy when he didn't see any action from Caleb. So he could just put keep putting lands down and get right into the Thrag Tusk. Yeah, had Caleb had a faster start, I think uh might have been a little tougher. <clears throat> this match would have been going a little bit differently for Greg. And right, yes. Caleb having the, the beast token, I think, for Greg there. What a nice guy. Yeah. So, still missing the blue source. Yeah, he's got a Tandem Lookout, a, sk um, a Syncopate in his hand, yep. it's a Thunderbolt Halkite. Ooh, taking Ooh, the two. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think this is? You think it's... He, he's using it for the blue. I, I, it's got to be a Tandem Lookout. Yeah. There we go. Yep. All right. So, next turn, if he hits the land, I think he... Does, does he also play Thunderbolt Halkite? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thunderbolt Halkite is definitely something that... I, I would say it's a star, it's a star of his deck... And it usually, I see it more often than I see Hellrider. Yeah, I mean, it, it ends games. Hellkite, Hell I, I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but the card went from, like, $30 down to, ooh, Miracle ooh, Bonfire. Wow, yep. Yeah, and take two more. So it looks like he's going to be taking five this turn. And or, he missed that attack. Well, maybe he's fearing Restoration Angel. Okay, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, so he doesn't want to lose the lookout without getting some cards out of it, so maybe he's fearing the Restoration Angel. Mm. And then, so... There's another threat to us. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh... So let's see what uh, Caleb follows us up with. I think um, land plus Thunder Maw would be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and you called yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he decides to pair, pair them, them up. up. And uh, yeah, for five, get a card. Yeah, coming for five. Yeah, that's a. Uh... That's something to do in standard. Yeah, I think 5-5 five, five haste to tap all your flyers, do one damage in, and draw a card? Yeah. Okay, I mean, that sounds like a $45 card, right? <laughs> it's pretty good. So, let's see what uh, Greg has up his sleeve on his turn. He has plenty of mana to do anything in his deck that he'd like. Yeah, is there a lot of spot removal in the type of deck that he's playing? Um, or maybe, uh, yeah. I think I think it's more along the lines of, like, Supreme Verdict and Terminus. Ah, I see. You know, like, Sweepers and stuff. Yeah. And see, he comes in for five here, and there, there's no block happening. He's no. probably just, yeah, take yeah. it right on the chin, and really hope for something else. Greg, well, Greg is very, very proficient at, and I think uh, some people can take notice is knowing when you can attack. And he's not going to leave his guy back to block. He knows he's not going to be blocking. So uh, he gets in there and gets that five point of damage in that he needs to. Plus yeah, the Terminus. Terminus, yeah. 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 So... Yeah. Yeah, Captain Hindsight would say, oh, yeah, you should have blocked. But, you know, I mean, how can you... I would not expect a Terminus. No, oh, I mean, yeah, and plus plus he could just be trying to get free points of damage in. Right, yeah, because attacking with a bigger creature is obviously not baiting like you would with a smaller one. Right. You just, like, send it out and see what happens. Yeah, like, had he attacked with a 1-1 one, one there into, or, you know, into, like, a nothing, then or into a 2-1, then maybe you're like, uh, maybe he's baiting. Ooh, yep. wow. That's another five points. Yep, no big deal, no big deal. Yeah, so we're talking about, like, the, the start that Caleb's deck is having, but look at the life totals. Like, Caleb's life total is at 13 right now. Yeah, yeah. 
and down to 10. So, like, Greg feels comfortable with this race, especially yeah, now. So, I mean, that's the uh, that's the third Thrak test we've seen. And that's the perks of playing this deck. Things like uh, Thrak test and Sphinx's Revelation mm-hmm. keep you out of reach of cards like Thunderball. Yeah, where you just, like, you'll take the five, but you'll gain it back, draw more answers for it. Uh, you either draw more Thrag Tusk or Terminus or more Sphinx's right. Revelations to deal with it. So, And Greg's deck also is producing a little bit of card advantage on the Thrag Tusks. When he wipes the board, he gets to put a 3-3 back into play. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Even, yeah. With, even with Terminus, it's not when it goes to Graveyard, it's yeah. when it never leaves play. Whenever it leaves play. Oof. Yeah, so that's how, that's how Greg is staying ahead in this matchup. Card advantage and life gain. Yeah. Yeah, especially with, uh, I mean... His deck, I haven't seen any uh, uh, low drop creatures yet. I've just yep. seen both sides uh, uh, pretty much just went to five mana. Right. You know, I saw it, you know, Tandem Lookout, but, you know, it went to five mana and just started beating with their, uh, you know, mid range uh, stars like Thunderball, Hellkite, and Vertex. Yeah. So, uh, Caleb getting in there for some damage. I, th- I think he has an Ash Is that what I that is? I think that is an Yeah, that is an Ash yeah. yeah. It passes the turn. I think I see Hellrider, Syncopate. He has Syncopate up, so. Um, he's maybe saving that in case uh, Greg taps out for a big Sphinx's Revelation at any point. Yeah, I would yes. think so. And so. you know, when I see Ash Zella right there, I see a chump. Oh, yeah. That's just, that's just a, a speed bump. Yeah. But a Restoration Angel, that's that's a pretty big deal right now. Yeah, that would be hard to deal with. So he and jumps jump. in front. Yep. Takes three, goes to seven. Mm-hmm. And I think a Restoration Angel might just lock this game up for Greg. Yeah, if, if there was definitely something where, especially since he's been gaining the 5 life consistently with the Thrag Tusk, I mean, if he was not gaining any life with the Thrag Tusk he played, he would be at 2. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, <laughs> speaking of uh, spoilers, we were talking about a little earlier, you think uh, Skullcrack would be uh, an all-star right here in Caleb's deck yes, right now? Yes, I think it would yeah. be played. Because especially, if not if not mainboard, it's sideboard. Because oh, you yeah. see the Thrag Tusk and you're like, well, okay, you're going to pay 5, and you're only going to take 4... For a 5-3, that way you get another 3. Right. So I think it would be very devastating. Especially with the Sphinx's Revelations. Uh, yeah, and there's Restoration Angel. And Sync for, for 4. four. Yeah, there it goes. Very nice. Yeah. I don't know if Greg was expecting a Counterspell from Aggro I don't think so either. I think he might have just expected the uh, blue just for Tandem Lookout. Right. And maybe not the... That, yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I would have assumed. Yeah. Not having a deck list. Yeah, especially seeing just two, two Steam Vents on there, I would, I would be very skeptical. Yeah, for counter spells. So he's coming in with both. He figures that <laughs> yeah, worst case worth that, it. Yeah, yeah, worst case I get in five. Yep. And Caleb makes a block, keeps his creature, goes to two. Yeah. And I, I, I'm pretty sure we already see a saw a bonfire from him. Yeah. Um, even if the bonfire happened, Thraxus is still going to hang around. So what's going to be a good card for him to really kind of play this turn? You know, I, I think Caleb's back is just too far against the wall to dig himself out. Mm. Um, especially if... I think Greg has like four cards in hand. If any of them are action cards, it's just really hard for Caleb to come back from this. What's the blue card in Caleb's hand? Is that another lookout? Or? That is another lookout. Okay, so... You know, anytime I see Greg with open mana like this, just open mana, has four cards in hand, I see a Bant deck... I see Sphinx's Revelation. Absolutely. I mean, there's a reason that card's like $25. Yes. I mean, people are playing it in the blue, white, red mid-range Delver decks. Or not Delver, like the delver list Delver decks. Oh, yes. And they hardly, like before, those decks never wanted to go past four mana. Right. Now they're playing Sphinx's Revelation, even to draw two cards gain two life. Right, yeah, now they have some kind of a top end, instead of yeah. just really kind of relying on the, oh, yeah, this replaces Tandem Lookout. Uh, ooh, it's a race ooh. charm, yeah. That's so that goes to the top. Yeah, that is... Time walk. Yeah, a little difficult. Let's see, uh, he gets uh, maybe another... Oh, okay. Um, I think I see another chump. Yeah, there's just <laughs> blockers out there. Uh, I think another angel would just end the game. Oh, that's it a revelation is... for two. Yeah. So, and like, you just get so much value out of that. Two life, two cards. Yeah, especially... Uh, uh, Having X in the spell, you know, having th- it costs three, but then having X for when you can inter- play at turn five, get a couple cards, or you can have a late game and just blow out with oh, like yeah. eight life and get eight cards. It's just, it's great for those type of control decks, like the flash decks and stuff. Yeah. So. so he's got two chump blockers. I don't, I'm 90% sure they're not paired. Yeah, I, yeah, no, they are not paired. And. Or I hope not. <laughs> the rich get richer as Greg plays another land. Yeah, and he is uh, really just saving some gas for ice. another Sphinx's Revelation. I yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. 
So I, I wonder what he's thinking about right now. I mean, is he thinking that, uh, is he afraid of a, of a Hellrider? I mean, be on 19? No, I don't think so. I think he was just making sure there was no plays to win him the game. Oh, okay. You want to go over your, your possible ways of, of seeing if there's a way for me to just win this game right now. Oh, I see. Yeah, and the only thing I think Caleb could have, yeah, that's just a chump there. Yeah. The only thing Caleb could have done was uh, Searing Spear that in response to the attack. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that makes sense. And do you think that um, do you think that Caleb would have Syrian Spirit if he had it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, it's it keeps him alive for a turn. It puts two it keeps two dudes on the, on the field, uh, and then it makes Hellrider just a little bit better if you play it. So yeah, and I think that leaving the two man up like that, even if he doesn't have anything, it really makes your other your opponent think. Yeah, it makes you think you have it, especially when you have the cards in your hand. Absolutely, because uh, Syrian Spearing that at, uh, and then putting the token into play makes Caleb live to bonfire. Right, that's true. Yeah, knowing well, we know what he had on top, but still. So, and yeah, there's, there's a hell rider. Okay, pairing him up. So I wonder if he's gonna attack here to draw four cards. Uh, you know, I think he would. Yeah, to try and find a serious spirit to stay alive, or yes, I because I think he would leave his tandem lookout. I think you leave the tandem lookout back and just draw three. Okay, draw three. Me. That Unless makes he, sense. Yeah, just because you would have something just in case you don't get it. Right. So. I'm not too confident about going all in here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. That way you could uh, at least have a chump blocker if need be. And he swings on both? Wow, okay. Yeah. I mean, Caleb, maybe Caleb already has like a Goblin Electromancer in his hand already. That he, you know. Yeah, you know, that's true. Maybe he has uh, something small to dump down there. Sphinx's Revelation. Uh-huh. Yeah, and Greg is. smartly does it for everything minus one in case Syncopate for one happens. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then also checks for first card draw on Terminus, which it wasn't, but... Mm. That could have happened too, you know. I swear, Greg. He, um, you know, it's just like the thing when you, when people ask uh, John Finkel, you know, how why are you so good? They always think like he always says, you know, I try to think of what's going to happen four turns from now, right? And I try to really kind of play my deck and know what I'm playing before I just go in blindly. So I think doing that, leaving one open for a possible syncopate, I probably wouldn't even thought that. Yeah, and you're right. There or is the, the Electromancer yeah. or the Terminus. That's true. Yeah, even uh, hanging out for the Terminus, I probably would have just been dumb and <laughs> put the whole off. thing. Yeah. <laughs> So, see if Greg has any way to deal with just an Electromancer, and he wins. I see a Dissipate in his hand. He's got Dissipate, a Sphinx's Revelation. Bunch of lands. Terminus. Bunch of lands, and yeah, and a Terminus, yeah. I think uh, he's coming in for five. Uh, Supreme Ver- okay, yeah. Okay. Supreme Ver- gets his 3-3, three, three, uh, and puts more pre- puts pressure on him to have something next turn. Yeah, shouldn't that have only been three? Because Oh, no, wait, that's the Electromancer on the other side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah wrong, wrong, wrong side of the field. Oh, yeah. <sighs> And Caleb takes his turn. Draw, he draws another. Is that a Hellrider? He There's a Hellrider in his hand. Is that a Mizium Mortars? I think it's a Mizium Mortars. Oh, yeah. uh, Thundermont Hellkai as well. Oh, Olivia? Olivia's okay. pretty good. Yeah. Especially since he can tag the. Oh, it's Faith. Yeah, that, that is rough. That is rough. Yeah. Now. Uh, chump Lock. Would you have played the Stormkirk Noble first to try and bait out uh, something? No, because I think Greg. Well, I mean. Ki- yeah, I mean, he could have, if I, if you were Caleb. Like, yeah, uh, but, I, you know, I, th- I don't think it would have worked on Greg. No, Greg would not have dissipated. I think he would have smelled that uh, that bait a mile away. Yeah. And been like, okay, you've got a 1-1, one, one. what's up? All right, so back to Caleb. Greg's doing a whole lot of sitting on building up a big Sphinx's revelation here. You know what he's doing? He is doing control. That's what yeah. he's doing. <laughs> Hang out, count everything you got. And a Thunder Mile Hellkite... And yeah, it's to keep it back. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, if you attack, you yeah. will die. So here comes a <laughs> revelation for a lot. Yeah, let me let me gain some more life and just draw a bunch of cards. Do you so. think uh, Caleb should have left up a steam vents there? That way, he could have bluffed the one syncopate. That way, he would have left it for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I think that uh, you know, being at a low life uh, creates some pressure right. on you. So I think that you know, thinking about it, you probably wouldn't. Uh, um, you know, there's a chance. Yeah, and it looks like he drew Detention Sphere, so this should wrap up the game. Uh, yeah. Detention Sphere, the Hellkite, and Bastion. Yeah, I, I, I would I would like that. Yeah, Detention Sphere. Okay, unless he has the Searing Sphere. Uh, no, nope, and yep, Caleb scoops it, it up. Yeah. All right, so game one goes to Greg. Yeah, I think that really would... Um, when Caleb thinking of the sideboard versus this, I mean, he probably had some kind of idea, you know, before he came in. So I... I I really feel like he was thinking about sideboard decisions before uh, the match. I see some, he had some Jace memory adepts in his uh, sideboard, and I think he's actually putting those in. Right. Um, 
Uh, yeah, a couple more Ash Zealots. So he's going more of an aggro plan because he probably only saw Greg, you know, play Frag Test. Land, 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 Frag Test. Right. So, you know, putting more pressure in the beginning is probably how he's going to win this. If if Caleb had Slaughter Games in the sideboard, do you think that's a card that should come in? <sighs> yes, but Caleb would never play a card like that because I, I think Caleb and Greg both really believe in cards that don't... Or aren't those, like, single... I'm going to take one thing. I think LSV was one person that said... That he really hates cards like that. He hates yeah. cards that are so narrow that it's like and like extract or slaughter game, circle extraction, cranial extraction. He just hates those cards because they're so narrow. So, in your opinion here, I'm Caleb Myers, and I'm playing cards like Goblin Electromancer stuff like that that allow me to play it early. Uh, turn two Goblin Mancher, uh, turn two Goblin Electromancer, turn three Slaughter Games, naming Sphinx's Revelation against Greg. It would be pretty devastating if I was Greg. Yeah, I think it, that I or would, even Thrak Tusk. What if you named Thrak Tusk? Yeah, I think that I think that really would put either one of those would really put a lot more pressure on Greg. Right. I think to be more um, either be more aware on if he's going to decide to go more con- uh, really focus on control if he loses one of those. Yeah. Or if he if he loses a Sphinx's Revelation, go more on aggro. If he loses a Thrag Test, then go then really go deep on control. Try to just keep hold on to uh, the Supreme Verdicts and Terminuses and really go for Drown Yard. At, at one point in that game, like Greg was down to twelve. Yeah, he had gained fifteen life. Yeah, he gained uh, fifteen from the uh, the Thrag Test, and I think he blinked one of the Thrag Tests with the Restoration Angel yeah. that he played one time. So had he not gained that life, like that game would have been over. It would have been completely over yeah. if he didn't have any of the Sphinx Revelations, none of the Thrag Tests. But you know, just like Thrag Tusk and Sphinx Revelation, you're gaining so much life by each one of those that yeah, a five in the air from a Thundermaw Hellkite is just like nah, irrelevant. Who cares? Yeah. Now when I'm gaining like a hundred life from you know. I've got four copies of Sphinx Revelation. I've got four copies of Thrag Tusk, so whatever. I, 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 I definitely think I would play Slaughter Games against the Bank Control deck, especially any type of deck that just has relies on the back of a few cards. Mm-hmm. Taking either one of those cards away and forcing them to find out, find their, especially the draw power of Sphinx's Revelation. Like, yeah. you could play, I don't want to say Singletons, but like the Drown Yard or Psychic Spiral, which are, is, you know, Feasible win conditions for Greg. Yeah, we saw the Psychic Spiral last week. Right, and if you, if, you take, if you take the Sphinx's Revelation away with Slaughter Games, which can't be countered... That's true. ...then he has to just naturally draw those cards, which is a lot harder to do. Yes, and you know, I think one of the other reasons why Caleb probably wouldn't have that in his sideboard is because he probably would believe that, you know what, maybe, uh, maybe four, uh, four mana is not something he wants to be doing. And, you know, uh... Yeah, we're looking at a sideboard right now. Yeah, yeah, no slaughter games, but you know, Rakdos return. I like Rakdos return in this. I think that would be one thing that's pretty devastating to him. Yeah, I, I think bringing in Rakdos return and possibly the Jaces. Yes. To uh, Jace uh, memory adepts. Yes. Would be pretty good. Yeah, and right here you can see that you know the Ash Zelda come out. It's uh, putting pressure on him. And I think Greg right now he's he's really just going to hope for uh, no tandem lookout. Right. And no Hellrider. Well, there's Tandem Lookout. There's a Tandem Lookout, <laughs> and that's bad. And that's 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 card advantage for Caleb. Yes. And bad. this is exactly what Caleb wanted. He wanted no no far seek, and me to have two creatures on turn three. Right. And he just wants a bunch of dual lands just come and play tapped. Right. Just come and play tapped. So and and Greg can't be taking two off these because he'll put himself in a position where he could die fast. Yeah, I think Caleb right now he he's playing he's playing stop and go magic. Yeah, he's just like you know what I'm just gonna f- slam these out here and see what you got. See, so the great thing about this is um, Caleb can overextend here because he's about to draw two more cards. Right. So you know a supreme verdict here doesn't set him back in any way whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Just it clears the board, but it's essentially he just started over you know on turn four. Right. So let's see if. Say Greg's down to six yeah. now, at, and so he just dies from four. yeah, like he just dies to like burn spells now. Yeah, and probably right here, I'm sure Greg is sitting on a spring verdict. Yeah, he has he's to gotta be. be. I mean, yeah, yeah there's there the verdict. Is, yeah. So be. another Hell Rider here just puts him in a very bad position. Oh yeah, oh, oh, that. Wow, whoa, <laughs> that uh, puts a uh, uh, it puts Greg down to forty dollars. Never put Greg down to one so fast, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's a threat test. Buys him a turn. So any burn? Oh yeah, he's like, hey, I, oh my god! He's like, I have every great card in my deck. So <laughs> wow, you know that's a uh, uh, unfortunately for Greg. I think that might be a contention for one of the fastest matches I've ever seen on commentary. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 unfortunately. So what? What are things? Here's here's a, a positive note. Greg is on the play. 
Yes, he's on the play now. And I think he he absolutely wants to be seeing Farseek in his opening hand. Yes, I think, you know, and I think Caleb, he just really had it there. He oh, really yeah. had it. He was just like, turn one, turn two, turn... He's, he had all the... Turn two, turn three, turn four. So, so... So there was absolutely no action from Greg, though, in the first three turns. Yeah, and you know, that... But that's that's band control, though. I mean, you really want to want to far seek with it, and you really just kind of want to. In, in Greg's defense, though, game one was Caleb's deck anything like that? Not whatsoever. No, right? there and was like, there's no way you expect him to make a two drop, a three drop, a four drop, and a five drop to smash you. No, yeah, I I would not expect that. Yeah, so Caleb did a, like just curved out perfectly there. Yeah, I think that's why Greg was just like I think he probably was okay with sitting on a supreme verdict in enough lands. Right. I think he's just like okay, well he's gonna play some things, probably like because he saw last game. Turn three tandem lookout. Well, what would you do? Who cares? Right. So, but yeah, seeing the Ash Zealot, the tandem lookout, and the Hell Rider, and the Thunder Malachite was just, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You don't do anything. You just Caleb kind of just shrugged his shoulders like, sorry, bro. Yeah, sorry, bro. I've got all this burn too, just in case you do it with anything. <laughs> it's like, ugh. So, uh, Caleb definitely sided into the more aggro version, though. He brought in the Ash Zealots, he yes. brought in more cards like that, so. I'm hoping Caleb brought in the Rakdos Returns with... I love the interaction between X-Spells and uh, Goblin Electromancer. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So that would be pretty interesting, hoping he brought those in. Yeah, and also it's kind of nice because, uh, you know, those Electromancers almost... They almost add a mana for you because you, you can keep uh, more lands open just in case you see a Syncopate. Right. So even just for that, just having that ability to almost like be a pseudo-mana dork for your X-Spells is great. So and also it makes your uh, your flashback spells be cheaper too. Right. I mean I don't know if you guys are playing any, but that's another added benefit to it. Yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking if uh, Caleb. I don't think Caleb. I think Caleb might be playing Think Twice, but I'm not sure. I, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I, I doubt he's it. more of a tap out aggro. You know, like a mid range Grixis. You keep up syncopate mana sometimes. Uh, is that safe to call him mid range? I think I'd be safe to call it that because I mean they're I think post sideboard no right but pre sideboard probably yeah I mean okay. I'm not really sure what he sided out but I mean once you start putting in the Rakdos returns and stuff then ooh, yeah so Greg does not have far seek for the third straight game did he have one yeah, game I one I think he did have one game okay one, I think but yeah you see another Ash cell and that's not what Greg wants to see he does no. not want to see that again so. Mm. Third straight tap land. Uh, I'll tell you what he really doesn't want to see. Tandem lookout. Yeah, he doesn't want to see a repeat of last game, which is just going to be... So, uh, there's a syncopate in in Caleb's hand. Ooh, yeah, that's going to the top. Turn? Yeah. And land tap to go. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I think that's a, that's actually not that bad. But Greg I, has to do it. If I was Caleb, I think life is irrelevant in this matchup to him. I yes. probably would have put that into play tapped, uh, just seeing what... Just in case he does tap out for something unusual. Maybe he plays a Jace there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Plus one's Jace. Yeah. So, and you would want to syncopate that. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, okay, so I see why the Azorius Charm happened. Azorius Charm, to time walk yourself, and then because you had the Dissipate to be able to, talk, to get yeah. rid of it. What's really interesting is he has he has enough to syncopate, uh, what's it called here? Uh, a Thragtusk yeah, or something? Yeah, Thragtusk. But yeah. Craig is in a far seat because I don't think he had his fifth land. You know, I got a feeling that Greg is, uh, he's kind of sniffing that out. He yeah. sees the steam vents, he sees the mountains sitting out there, and all he did was just replay the Ash Zealot, and maybe Caleb just did that because he didn't want to reveal anything else. Yeah, absolutely. So, he knows Greg isn't playing Syncopates, or he's fairly comfortable that Greg isn't playing Syncopates. He hasn't seen them. Right, as in the only thing he's seen is, uh, you know, uh, Dissipates, your traditional blue-white stuff, Dissipates, his Orders Charm, right. things like that, so. So. Things Revelation. Let's see what Caleb has. He's going to take two. Or is that a Sulfur Pulse? No, that's a Sulfur Pulse. Okay, yeah. so no two. Yeah, and I wonder if Hellkite? he's going to... Yeah, I wonder... Oh, no, no just passing. He really doesn't want uh, Th uh, Thrax Test to hit the board. I think that's what he's playing here. Yeah, I think he might be a, a hold on to maybe a Searing Spear or something. And there's the Drown Yard. I think that's one thing that is... Uh, um, Augurable is coming down for Greg. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, that's one thing that would be good, especially against the Ash Zealot. Right. So, obviously, Greg didn't have that Augur Bolas before, because I probably would just slam that uh, Ash Zealot, uh, let the Ash Zealot just happen, yeah. and then just walk all day with the Augur. Like, no problem. So, Greg's reviewing what he could take. I saw uh, a charm, and Zori's charm in Greg's hand mm. already. So, let's see what he takes. Takes, takes the, gate. the gate. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, it sits on the gate. And also, you know, that's pretty uh, good... Uh, 
uh, for Caleb just to see. Right. So, so now Caleb's probably to. not going to hold up uh, Syncopate Man anymore. Right, and he's probably not going to hold up uh, um, like a Hellrider or anything like that. Because yeah. he's like, you got Negate, what's up? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a Hellrider. Hellrider. Crash for three. Up. Yep, Crash for... Well, it's one so far. Oh, one and four total? Or no, this is going to get his Orius Triumph. Yep, yeah, there it is, yeah. So he hits for one. Yeah. All right. Four, four for one, pretty depressing. But... You know, you get the Azorius Charm out of there. You have a Haste guy on top, so it's not as bad. No, it's not terrible. And if you have another land drop, you could be like, uh, Tandem, look out, Hellrider. Ooh, yeah, you're right. Ugh, I'm oh. crashing. <laughs> I'm, drawing, I'm drawing some cards, sir. Yeah, I don't think he's not going to attack with the Augur, because he just wants to... Oh, and the oh, Drown, drown yard. yard. Get rid of it. That's like a now, Let's combo. see what he, uh, he takes out. It's a Hellrider, Sulphur Falls, and Ash Zealot. That's pretty relevant. Yeah. So, uh, very good play by Greg. Just... Yeah, there's always turn the top of the drown yard. It's like, man, that's like uh, Olivia. Yeah, uh, Olivia resolves because what? What was the name on Cavern? Was it Vampire? But yeah, it was. Uh, I, I don't. Th yeah, it was Vampire. Yeah, okay. Because he wanted it not not be able to be countered. It's okay. Yeah. So that is a live Olivia. Yeah. yeah, and you know, next turn if he uh, gets another land, he'll have seven to be able to tap and then take it. Uh, end of turn, you don't ping Augur there? Uh, you know, hindsight, maybe. Maybe it would have been a good idea. Oh, and uh, Diet Coke. Mm. So shout out to Diet Coke from yeah. uh, Marsh Hanifel. Oh, thanks, and Mark. Thanks for... <laughs> and Greg holds it up for us. Yeah. Uh, so now he actually is in range. He has a um, uh, four, he has seven. And uh, he has, does he have double black? He has, what is, what's under that mountain there? I see the summit. I think that's a blood crypt. Oh, oh. yeah. He has got the double black. So, yeah, he can definitely uh, uh, take that down. Or at least, you know, take an auger. You, you take away just most of the stuff, that, you know, whatever you can. Yeah. But right now, I probably would just sit and just wait for him to play stuff and just keep beating. For two? Which, yeah, he's leaving the gate up. Yeah, he's leaving the gate up. Maybe he's uh, playing around maybe a burn, like a Syrian Spear or something, just tag out the, the auger. Yeah. You know, maybe, I think I think it's just around the syncopate. Yeah, and I think Greg Greg might be a little intimidated by the Olivia, and that's why he's hanging out with some mana. Yeah, because it is very bad, especially taking the Thrag Tusk, taking his Angel. Ooh. And wisely, uh, Caleb not attacking with it because he doesn't want it to get Azorius charmed and right. then drown Yard. Right. Yeah. So he'll tap. He'll go ahead and deal damage to the Augur. And Jack is Augur. And then um, so you know, he'll probably crash in with the. Uh, would you attack with Augur? Yeah, oh, yeah. Augur's going in. Yeah, just let it go in. He gets to put it on top, and then he doesn't... Oh, it's with both. Okay. Yeah. That's... Uh, that's I, I, I like that play there. He's also leaving all of his mana up, so just in case something does happen, it won't happen. It won't happen. Azorius Charm. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Think twice. Yeah, think twice. Yeah, from Greg. Yep. Uh, I wonder if Greg flashes that back, or if he just wants to stick to the Drown Yard plan. Uh, you know, I, I think he might flash it back. Yeah. I mean... Does he have enough to do... With, no, he doesn't have enough to do both. Yeah. So, yeah... So he's, he's going to take the damage there, but he will just draw just that. So it's four, five. He took five? Yeah. Yeah. And a turn, uh, flash yeah. it back? And a turn, flash it back. And he's got, let's see, it's one, two. He's got three open with the Drown Yard. I probably would have did that uh, during the attack in case he draws Orius Charm. Mm, yeah. So. Let's see what else he draws. He's got a Supreme Verdict in there and another Farseek, too. Yeah. Ver so. verdict's, verdict is happening. Yeah. Yeah, because he, there's nothing he can do about it. No. And also, that LV is only going to get bigger. Yeah, so Verdict so. happens, and he leaves enough up to Drown Yard. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, he's counting out his mana a little bit. Setting aside probably, you know, enough mana to pay for the Drown Yard, but irrelevant mana that he's right. not, not going to feel guilty about using. So, you know, sets that to the side. He's right on top, so Caleb can see. Like, so, I am going to Drown Yard you. So oh, what's no. going to happen? That's just the Verdict. Oh, yeah. Fooled us. Mm. We're gonna set that. Unless he wants a revelation for one. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, get extra value. Yeah, far seeking that out. Yeah, why yeah, okay. not? Okay, that was his plan. Yeah, yeah that, that was his plan. Leave the man up for the negate. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So he just wants to see. Because uh, I mean, right now, obviously, there's no creatures out. You know, bonfire. What would you do? You know, but he'll at least be able to deal something with it because it's gonna fireball him for yeah. two, four, six. So here, here, Caleb can resolve anything he wants. Right. Like he can just resolve, any, especially having sync syncopate back up. Yeah, and also, I would really like a uh, Rakdos return right now. Oh, wow. And he's tapping out five, leaving two open for Thermite. Hellkite. Hellkite. And Greg's like, yup. That's a Hellkite. Takes that right on the chin. 
Um, Greg still does have Sphinx's Revelation in hand with Negate backup, so he will be able to gain a bunch of life at one point. Yeah, so he's just going to bide some time. He's just like, mm, Thunderwall, I'll just take it, whatever, because I'm about to gain uh, more than that back. Well, he's just going to de-spear. Uh, de yeah, Detention Sphere this thing right here, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think that, because you just can't deal with that. No. That, more of that. So, Caleb. Detention Sphere. What yep. you going to do, brother? Let's that happen. Nothing. All right. So he's yeah, he's happened for Rock's Faith, Rock's Mender. Faith Mender. Uh, yep, yeah, that with a uh, Sphinx Revelation that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, does Caleb have any way to deal with that? Uh, it's a one four. I mean, one ooh, five. It's one five. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Man, that is ugly. That's probably a Hellrider, maybe tapping four. Oh, oh Olivia. Oh, I can just take that, Rhino. I mean, that? I just take it. Whatever. Look at that. That's a that's a pretty sweet rocks. <laughs> Man, yeah, I think that. Uh, uh, do you think that Caleb uh, had the Olivia in his hand? You think he had to the two Olivias at once, or no? Just I think it? I think he drew. I think he drew that card. Yeah, yeah. Actually, his beard wished it to the top because it was the perfect card. <laughs> so I mean, he can't. Uh, Greg can, here can revelations for umpteen thousand. Yeah, and, and we'll, gain just a, and double that much in life. Right, especially he probably wants to do something to gain life right now because Caleb doesn't have the man to ta to take it in response. Right. So it looks sure. like he's going to be six. And I say a Sphinx, yep, for six, leaving three up. Um, is that a Sun Petal Grove? Sun Petal Grove, Henry Lynn Harbor, and Ophelia Drown Yard. So not enough to Drown Yard. Right. He's leaving three up. Okay. And, you know, I think he's leaving it up because he still wants to have the negate. Still I, wants to have something up for it. I'm not sure if, why so I, three? Uh, but... To pay for a syncopate. That oh, way he yeah. doesn't have to waste the, yeah. the negate. So, so, so Caleb go and runs the syncopate out there so he makes him tap out for it. Because would you like to gain 12 life or would you like to just, you know, go ahead and just waste a, something else, like a negate on that? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to blow it out. And it wouldn't matter to him to have one mana open anyway. No. It's just like, meh, whatever. So, let's see. I think he played his land for turn ready. He just drew six yes. cards. Yeah. He should have to go to discard. Uh, it is relevant that Caleb can ping and take that guy in one turn. Yeah, and, he's oh. just going to attack. Yeah, block, whatever. I'll gain two life. Put him up to 23. And, you know, as far as discarding-wise, I think he'll just sit there and he'll just go ahead and just have... Uh, um, and he'll just go ahead and have all of the uh, um, counter spells he needs. He'll keep it. And then the, uh, the detention sphere. He'll probably just keep uh, maybe a Supreme Verdict as well. And Jace. Jace is very bad. Jace is... Yeah. Especially since you have the Olivia, he's, his Jace is going to be perfectly guarded. I mean, he's just going to be uh, dealing damage to all the creatures, he's going to be taking them, and then he right. will never have anything that's able to deal damage to Jace because of Olivia. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, I think Greg's in trouble here. I, oh, yeah. I, th I think Greg's in a lot of trouble. Um, the, the only good thing, the only positive thing for Greg, uh, I'm sorry I, I was looking down at some of our uh, anal uh, off-camera analysis here, but uh, does he have Psychic Spiral in hand? I don't. I don't know if he actually. I don't even know if it's a main board. Well, this is game three, right? So uh, yeah, I don't even know if he has it in his deck. He's counting. I don't think that if I was him, I wouldn't. I would probably take a lot of those uh, mill stuff, and I probably would uh, put it put it away because of how fast this deck is. Right. Because I don't want to pay five for something. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, so, I, I want to die by then. So Caleb. Uh, Caleb's looking in, in good shape here with that. The, yeah, the Jace, Jace, the Olivia. Yeah, the, J the Olivia is just pretty much the best bodyguard you can have for that Planeswalker. And, and I think Greg is digging for a detention sphere. Like, that's that's really what he wants to hit. Oh, yeah, and especially it's going to be very hard for him since he's milling 10 every turn. Yeah, and how many Sphinx of Revelations has Greg played this, turn this game? Two? One of them for six? Yeah, I think there's two, yeah. So, um, it's probably something close to about... 20 cards left in Greg's deck? Yeah, it's it's not much. And, you know, yeah, I think Detention Sphere is really one of his only ways out. And he keep, you know, he keeps looking back, trying to count and see what he has left. Probably count his outs. Like, if, if he milled a Detention Sphere, he's already played a Detention Sphere, like, there's only one left in, in, the, in the deck then? Yeah, I, I wouldn't think there would be more than two or three. I don't think there would. Yeah, I don't think so either. You know, okay, so here he's, uh, he's tapping out, uh, so like eight. He's getting his Sphinx four or five. So, um, the turn before, I think if uh, Greg had played 
Revelations for five? I think he played uh, Temple Garden tapped. I think that we... Uh, no, no, no. It, it, can't, it was a sun pedal untapped. And I see. So what, what he did was, instead of doing it for six, if he would have did it for five, he still would have been able to pay the two for Syncopate, and he would have had negate mana up for the... Oh, yeah, for the uh, For the Jace. I see, yeah. Yeah, rough. So, okay, so there's another uh, threat test. Puts him at 43, but I think at this point, man, he's really just looking at Jace. I don't think that a Greg has Jace's in his deck. I don't think he put... If he had him in his sideboard, you know, he probably didn't board him. Because like you said, you don't want to be playing the mill plan against the aggro deck. I don't think he would even be thinking for a second that he would see a Jace. Yeah, so yeah, I I, I don't think Psychic Spirals is even in the deck at this point. No. And and that Jace would blow my mind. If I saw that, I'd be like, what? That's like, your black red aggro deck is like, oh, you want to try and mill me now? (laughs) That wasn't enough? Okay, well... And this is what happens. This is what happens when you're just on your heels and milling ten cards. All of your outs are gone. Yeah. You'd rather be drawing those with Sphinx's Revelation. I think you just chalk this up to just excellent sideboarding by by Greg. Or uh, by by Caleb. Yeah, I think going like... I mean, I've seen Caleb actually have sideboards that are completely uh, uh, transformative. Right. Transforms into a completely different deck. But this didn't really transform. It was like, I'm going aggro, aggro, aggro. You deal with that. um, And because most of the answers that Greg has... Also clears his side of the board. That's true. So, Jace is good because yeah. you don't... Yeah, Supreme Verdict? Hmm. It's not a Planner Cleansing. No. So <laughs> <laughs> Who plays Planner Cleansing? <laughs> that's true. That's a sweet Terminus you got. Wrong card, bro. Yeah, especially milling for 10, especially with all the card draw that's happening over here. Right. Devastating. Yeah, it really Devastating. is. Devastating. And so, there's a Refuge. Although, if Greg did have a Psychic Spiral, do press in for Caleb. And Caleb takes it down. Oh, he wow. takes it down with the Jace, the Jace from behind. And that is just like... I can't even... mind I, I still can't even believe that even happened. I think that card just went from $8 to $12 because of this match. It had to have, especially. I mean, So congratulations to Caleb. Took it down, he beats the band control deck. Yeah, good Last thing, week's guys. winner. Yeah, absolutely.